chapter. Chapter 13, chapter 14. I'm like, damn, didn't you have another friend, Tyrone, Greg, or Johnny? Like, do you really have? Or is it only you have Fat Joe stories? It's a question. If you grew up with somebody 25 or you knew somebody 25 years ago, are they still at the kitchen table talking about the God Raheem or the this 25 years ago every chance they get? This shit crazy, man. You know, man out here trying to do God's work, man, take care of the community, take care of his family, pay his bills, be a loyal friend. Man, I got a brother's in jail right now for life. But close to it. He's been my man 30 years I've been riding with him. Every time I talk to him, he shows nothing but gratitude. Damn, my brother, you keep it real. You and Rich always pick up the phone. You always He don't want nothing. He ain't a bum. He ain't never asked me for commissary in 30 years. But he's grateful that when he picks up the phone and he calls, Fat Joe still picks up for him. Then you got guys that you go visit in snowstorms and pay their commissaries and take care of them. And the true meaning of disloyalty. And just because you know a person, remember I'm telling you out there, and I'm not discouraging nobody from being cool with nobody. You know, if that's your man, that's your girl, she's doing time, keep it real with them. If you really love them and they love you, Keep it real, rich players actually should get a, a trophy for how many people he takes care of, their commissary brothers that he loves, and he keeps it real with their families. Um, But just imagine you wasted your time going to snowstorms to visit people, to uh, put money on their books. Check up on a mother. You know? They might go through hard times in there. You know, the other people locked up are telling you they dope fiends. You know, you don't want to give up on your man like that. Even though you know they got that hair on. They got that monkey on their back. And when you talk to them, they always sniffing like... <laughs> doing all that shit. But, you know, you try to keep it real. You don't want to believe that. And so, shout out to the hallucinators who everybody, I was in the Bronx right now. Am I lying, Rich? Four people approached me as the leg. We're not really hearing that, bro. But we got to be very careful about who we pump up. If you're a man of respect, a woman of integrity, uh, a person of honor, of morals. You got to be careful who you co-sign and who you pump up because people respect you and how you've held yourself down and how you've ran through the streets. No, you got a guy cool with you. He get locked up when he's 15. You out in the streets for 30 years. Getting money, taking care of 45 guys. Paying everybody's funerals, everybody's bills, everybody's lawyers. Opening businesses. Anytime somebody came to you with beef, you smashed them. A lot of you guys are scorned gangsters. Because you all took that little, uh, that cheek off. 
And so, God forbid I went there. <laughs> God forbid I tell you stories, real stories. But <clears throat> you got to live in the real world. You got to be in the real streets to have history. So somebody can know who you are or what you've done. You know how harder it is to be in the street paying rent? You know, I've often said, not all, but a lot of guys went to jail. Do you? This is my point. Do you know this homeless dude went in the bank the other day and robbed the bank for $1 and waited for the cops and said, please call the cops. I want to go to the feds. Some people, you know, it's a lot of responsibility if you got kids, your baby mother, dust head, um, your whole family in jail. You know, people don't want to accept responsibility and go to work or do what they got to do. So they go to jail. Then they want to come out for the same party every two, three years. Like, yo, I'm home, yo. Let me tell you something. When you go to jail, 99.9% .9 of the time, this is before my time, nobody comes see you. Not even your own family. Forget your girl. I got a brother who I won't say his name, but he's my brother and I love him to death. Who went to jail for his wife. She ain't go see him. He had five years. I used to go see him every month. One day she calls me and says, Joe, I want to go upstate to see him with you. I go upstate with her. She sits down and tells him, I want a divorce. It was the most horrible drive back from upstate. But this is reality. And if that's from your wife, what do you expect from your friends? They just don't come see you. They forget about you. It's like you're in a, a tomb. You're King Tut. You're in a tomb. You're living in a tomb. Till you get home. So they visit you and keep it real through snowstorms and try to lift your morality and be your friend and, 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 and give you some sort of dignity and respect. A lot of guys went to jail for something, came home, and their crew wasn't nothing when they came home. Washed up. At least you go somewhere, you come out, your boys are still popping. 